Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Calhoun's. If you still have a stomach for the NCAA tournament after yesterday, pick up a Feed 5 or Feed 10 family pack from Calhoun's for the watch parties. we got four more games this week coming up, or four more days of games, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, as the NCAA tournament rolls on. Calhoun's can help you provide the food for your party with those Feed 5, Feed 10 family packs. They are fantastic. And, folks, we're just two weeks away from Easter. Make your reservations now for the family get-together. Calhoun's. A taste of Tennessee. Okay, uh, social media got so bad last night for the balls in terms of mm. saying they were choking <laughs> dogs that uh, there were media guys in this town that I've never seen say anything bad about fan reaction, fan response, who were saying, whoa, whoa, calm down. You're, you've been pretty rough on a team here that played great all year. Don't let this game destroy the season. Uh, I think there are a lot of people who think that game destroyed the season. I saw some people last night saying that – Tournament's all that counts in basketball. Who cares about all that other stuff? So I ask you guys, how will this team be remembered by the masses? How will it be remembered? SEC champion, unexpected, fun team to watch, <laughs> scrapped all year, played well, or chokers who lost to Loyola, never you, should have. You said by the masses. Yep. So you started it with an M. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say by the masses that it would be remembered as a successful season because this was a team that was picked 13th in the exactly. league. Look, the immediate aftermath Should is frustration. You know, I'm yep. a Saints fan. I got to watch them lose to the Vikings. But I enjoyed the ride. And I think you had to enjoy the ride of what this team did. Yeah. Uh, it's probably one of the biggest underachieving teams that Tennessee's had. They, there have only, what, been three teams in school history that have won this many? Overachieving, yeah. sorry. Uh, only been three teams in, in school history that have won this many games, three other teams. I think it was a very successful season. Was it disappointing? Sure it was. But if you look at the whole scope of it, I don't know how in the world you wouldn't be satisfied and with it. And here's the other part about it, and I was a part of some of these championship teams, this team might be the most likable group of guys. I mean, yes, they, they not only won, but they did it the right way, and they played together. They were the underdog mentality. You continue to see growth. Um, the way they handle themselves, like Animal Schofield with the media, um, they're just impressive from top to bottom. So for me, yes, it's, it's, it's frustrating from the fact that, like you said, their side of the, the bracket gave them an awesome opportunity moving forward. But if we take a step back and look at what this team has accomplished on and off the court, it's arguably one of the best seasons ever. Yep. Agreed. Yes. Uh, but there are folks, though, that uh, to me, if you didn't enjoy this season, then you don't enjoy anything. I mean, if this game ruins the season for you, it's a situation where when joy comes and knocks on your door, you're like, ah, it slams the door back in your face. <laughs> Not interested in you. I don't want joy. My joy comes from saying, I told you so. My joy comes from saying, they'll blow it in the ninth. They'll choke at the end. <laughs> they'll miss this kick. They'll miss this shot. That's your joy. Yeah. Not, dad gum, look at all the wins. Yeah. Look how this team played. Look how they represented you. Uh, all, of know, yes, all of them. Yes, all of them. I just at some point you got to figure out: are you are you a fan of of the team and, and winning, or are you a fan of just misery and see, People need to wake up and realize this isn't like college football. In college basketball, there's only going to be one team yeah. that ends the season with a victory. Yeah. Everybody else is going to lose along the way. You lost to the nuns' team on St. Patrick's Day when a prayer was answered. Do oh. <laughs> they? If they had a nun. I didn't hear that in the broadcast. <laughs> I mean, deal with it. I mean, if you believe that all that matters in basketball is the tournament march, and that's it, then I don't want to hear from you cheering when Tennessee wins in Rupp Arena. I don't want to hear from you tweeting happy stuff when when they're cutting down the nets after a regular season championship. Can't have it both ways. Well, exactly. I agree. Um, the, you just look at where this program was going into the season, and I think most of us thought, best you get in the tournament. At best, you get in the tournament. Right. Nobody thought you'd win an SEC title. Nobody thought you'd be in the SEC finals on, in the tournament. I mean, it's, it's been a really good year, a team that pretty much stayed in the top 15, top 20 all season. I, I just, it's hard for me to say that, that now you're going to look backwards through this loss. Your loss is now the filter that you see the rest of the season through. I understand, hey, my team's lost Super Bowls. My biggest fandom is losing <laughs> Super Bowls. They don't get any bigger than that. A day after it doesn't ruin the season. You know, you enjoyed more weeks than you didn't. This, this team deserves credit. For How much better would it have been to get to Atlanta and lose in the Sweet 16? 
I mean, I oh, think that's what a lot of people, the disappointment was. People saw that path was there to at least get to the Elite Eight, maybe. I lose agree. To Kentucky. But yeah, at least to Kentucky. <laughs> I, I agree that the, it's it, losing the, to me, that's the biggest problem. You had a chance for another week of national exposure, which would have helped your program from a recruiting basis. So you lost the Sweet 16. But here's the thing. The P, I don't think people would have said, well, at least we made the Sweet 16. No, Tennessee's never made a Final Four. If you'd gone down there, made it to the Elite Eight, well, you've been there. Now you get Kentucky. Well, we've beaten them two out of three. <laughs> you lose to Kentucky in the Elite Eight, you got the same people who are screaming mad today would have been screaming mad then. Exactly. So, uh, and that's the other thing. For those people that are saying, if not now, when? It was set up for you. This was a better team. I never believe in that because it happens when you least expect it. You were over there as a, on, on both of these teams. 2008, 31 and 5, best team in school history, number one in the nation at one point, number two seed, upset by Ohio State in the Sweet 16. People said, if not now, when? No. 2010, you got a team that you have four guys arrested on New Year's Day. You finish third in the conference. You get kicked in the teeth by Kentucky in the SEC tournament. You go out throwing punches. So you drop and get a six seed in the tournament. It's a bad draw. You get San Diego State first. If you beat them, you get Georgetown, which is a bad matchup. Oh, yeah, you go to the Elite Eight that year. So that when you least expect it is when you have it. I hate that, if not now, when argument. It's crap. It's a crap <laughs> argument. So it may be next year they make an Elite Eight. They may never make an Elite Eight again or a Final Four. But it'll happen when you least expect it. I don't think it's, you can sit there and say, well, they didn't do it now. So I expect it next again. year. Yeah, okay. All right. When we get, we'll get more with you. I want to talk about the <laughs> year coming up. Because the expectations are going to rise. What's Tennessee need to do to improve? When we come back, though, Jeremy Pruitt's first season as UT head coach really kicks off this week. Spring practice, we're going to preview for you. Come on back on the Sports Source.